Good Wednesday morning. How are you doing today? So glad you could join me. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you're looking forward to Friday. I hope you are not like this little puppy. Happy Wednesday. When is Friday coming? A lot of us feel that way, don't we? I wanted to share a devotion today with you, and it's from Revelations 11, 7. And it, I want to talk about the cancel culture. And we see in this all around us, and uh, basically what we're doing is when someone doesn't agree, we just block them out. And we're seeing this happen now, especially with Christianity. Um, you know, everybody thinks that if you're good or if you do a certain whatever socially is acceptable, that you're fine. And then if we start preaching from God's word and it's contrary to what public opinion is, uh, we get canceled out. Uh, but I want you to understand God's word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It never changes. And God doesn't use a popularity poll. And it doesn't matter what the world thinks. It's what God thinks. It doesn't matter what your preacher thinks. It doesn't matter what your church thinks. It's what God thinks. So I want us to look at that today from Le Revelations 11, 7. It says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So we see that uh, as we, and I think we are approaching the end times, as we approach the end times, we're going to see the, the Antichrist. And we're already seeing many uh, of the Antichrist leaders now that are taking shape and taking political uh, or power uh, positions that are using this cancer culture to get their way. You know, the church, uh, when we go back in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 5, we see that the church in uh, Corinth, uh, the Corinthian church, they were having problems with sin. It was in, infesting uh, in the church, infecting the church, and we have the same problem today. Uh, churches now are not following the Bible, and it's not been any different since the beginning of the time. So we see Apostle Paul talking about this in 1 Corinthians and he also talks about it in Galatians 5, 9. He says in 1 Corinthians 5, 6, it says, Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Uh, Galatians 5, 9, he says the same thing to the, the church in Galatia. He says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What he was talking about was that this sinful behavior or leadership was causing you know, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. And that's what happens when you allow uh, sinful things into the church. Uh, people that are um, just sinful. They're not living by the Bible. I don't have to call one particular kind of sin out. Uh, but it's all sins. And if they're not going to be humble and ask for forgiveness... And they're just going to be accepted or overlooked because so-and-so is nice. So we're going to overlook that what they're doing. Well, you cannot allow them to be in leadership positions. And so we're seeing today a form of what we would have called in the early church excommunication. And we're calling it a cancer culture. Um, it's basis, but it's based, unfortunately, in our society on opinions and it's not on sin you see a cancel person today is shunned or snubbed when they offend uh, a particular group or a culture or a political party or a religious reason you know that is what i think today is wrong with our political parties uh, just because you're in my party, I'm going to overlook what you do and let you do anything you want to do. And that's why all this stupidity is going on in Washington, D.C. and in Raleigh. Uh, the politicians, when they see evil, when they see wrong, they need to call it out. It doesn't matter what party you're affiliated with, and it's destroying our great nation. Well, the same thing will destroy each and every church. When you have leaders that are living sinful lives, you need to call them out. They need to step aside. 
That does not mean that God will not forgive them. God will forgive them if they seek forgiveness and turn from their wicked ways. But as long as they are doing those things, they should not be in leadership positions. That's not just the preacher. That should be your elders, your deacons, whatever you call your leaders in your church and your denomination, your Sunday school teachers, your singers, people that stand in that pulpit and command respect from the congregation. They need to be held to a higher standard, a godly standard. You see, when Christians, on the other hand, in this cancer culture that we're in, when they're canceled today for their biblical values and their views, which is a good thing, we find that when we are canceled because of society, that we are in good company. You know, it's almost like a badge of honor because when society accepts us, we need to question if we're doing the right thing because we know the standard of the world is not godly and we see all around us that sin is accepted. I want you to realize that Jesus himself experienced this cancer culture. He saw it... Uh, when it was the ultimate cancer culture was that he was crucified. Um, the day is coming when those who hold biblical views will be canceled. And I want you to understand that. Uh, you know, we're not viewed very positively. Uh, the Antichrist is going to forbid the preaching of the gospel during the tribulation, and he's going to cancel the followers of Christ. We see that in Revelation 6, verse 9. We're basically already seeing it now. If I as a preacher stand up and preach too strongly about some of the sexual immoralities, I would be considered hate speech, even though I am preaching the word of God. But let me clarify something. You know, you and I need as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we need to remember to hate the sin, but love the sinner. There's a big difference in that. You know, I see and watch, it's almost like some religious organizations take pleasure in telling someone they're going to hell. We should be crying that they're going to hell, and we should be lovingly trying to correct them, and I think that's the problem. So today, if you're out there and you're trying to share with all the world, and there's so much ungodly behavior, that some people, you need to realize, they don't know the Bible. They don't know God's will. So they really don't quite understand that what they're doing is sinful and that the results are going to be eternal damnation. So our job as Christians and believers, as we study the word of God like we're doing today, is to lovingly share God's word with them. Make sure you clarify, this is not what I say. This is what God says. It's God's heaven. This is God's creation. So we have to go with what God says. You know, so if you experience being canceled for your faith, I want you to take heart because I want you also to realize that you and I, we're in the minority. The ones that are following God and trying to live a godly life, we're in the minority. But it's nothing more than what Jesus predicted in John 15, verse 20. Look at that scripture with me real quickly. It says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So we need to remember that. Jesus went through all this. He told us what was going to happen. So don't be surprised, but make sure we do it in a loving way. You know, it's better to be persecuted for having said the truth than to be favored for having flattered and living in sin. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you receive a blessing. Keep the faith, don't give up, and make sure you share it in a loving way. I want you to pray with me before we depart today. Almighty God in heaven, your word is steadfast. You have given us commands, rules, and laws to follow. And if we do this, we'll have a better life. Help us to understand that, Father. But help us to also remember that through your mercy and your grace, we're made whole. So help us to be merciful and graceful to those around us. And help us to be loving as we share your word. 
We praise you and thank you for your blessings. In the name of Jesus, your Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you soon.